Okay, so let's talk medical school. Medicine is one of the most prestigious fields out there, and so of course it is one of the most competitive paths to follow. Just in 2021, here in the United States, there were over 62,000 students fighting for one of the 23,000 medical school spots available. Clearly then, just from a numbers perspective, not everyone is able to get in, regardless of qualifications, and so that leaves 40,000 students left out of the system. Many of these students choose to look for alternative options such as doing master's programs to boost their resumes for the next application cycle, switching fields to other healthcare related careers such as becoming a physician's assistant, or simply applying to medical school outside of the United States. This is what I chose, and in this video I'm going to be going over my background, the specific school I'll be going to, and why. Welcome to the channel, my name is Frank, and I wanted to make this video just in case there was anyone out there that was feeling kind of lost in their medical career, maybe really not being sure about which direction to go in. There's a lot of options for medical applicants, and this is just going to be like a review of my experience, my own thoughts, and my own perspectives. So hopefully after this video, this helps clear things up and resonates with some of you. Anyways, let's just jump right into it. I'm gonna go right into my background. So as an undergrad, I did the traditional pathway of having absolutely no idea what I wanted to do with my life. And so I tried a bunch of things out. I did part of a computer science degree because I really liked programming and coding. Then I moved on to information technology or IT. During this time, I sold a few thousand dollars worth of video games on eBay. And then I even put months of work into a company that was meant to build gaming computers. If you haven't figured it out by now, I am a massive nerd. Eventually though, I did switch my major to biology after taking a human biology course with an amazing professor and essentially falling in love with the field. The thing is though, during this experimentation phase, those first two years of college, my GPA was somewhere around a 2.8. And so because of that, it took me quite a bit of time to figure out how to be a good student since I never actually developed any good study habits throughout my first two years. And it took me a bit longer to graduate since a lot of my computer science and IT credits couldn't really transfer over to my biology degree, which leads us to my final stats and experience. When all was said and done, I finished with an AMCAS overall GPA of 3.53 and a science GPA of 3.61, just because my last few years I was doing very, very good in school, so I have a very strong upward trend, thankfully. In case of my MCAT, I studied for around three months and then I ended up with a 513, which for like my particular test date was around the 88th percentile. In terms of experience, I participated in two research papers that weren't published, but I still contributed to, have some teaching experience, both paid and unpaid, have a lot of hours in the outpatient setting, which is where I work, and a few hundred hours of shadowing and volunteering at a children's hospital. I'm trying to be as transparent as possible here so that anyone watching has a very, very good idea of my own personal standing as I explain to you why I've decided to leave the United States for medical school. But anyways, I applied to a bunch of MD medical schools here in the United States in 2020, and with all said and done, I got exactly one interview and that particular school decided not to accept me into their program. So I was left with what I thought were essentially two different options. Option one would be to just wait until the next application cycle and apply again to US MD schools and in addition, try to get into DO schools as well. And then this would essentially mean that I would have to wait another year and a half to potentially get into a program. Or the second option that I had was to go to a Caribbean school. And Caribbean schools, since they have rolling admissions, they essentially start new classes multiple times in the same year. So I could get started very, very quickly with a Caribbean school, which do tend to have lower admissions requirements for their students. But the downside is that with Caribbean schools, there's like a giant stigma around their attrition rates and their residency match rates. So I spent a few months thinking about this and eventually I had an interesting thought. If people can go to the Caribbean for medical school, are there other places around the world where US students can go to get a medical degree? And the answer is yes. So I actually made a video breaking down all of the different places you can go to medical school outside of the US, somewhere linked up above. And one of these particular programs caught my eye, so I applied, I interviewed with them, and I was accepted into the Oshner program at the University of Queensland in Australia. Literally the opposite side of the world from where I live and initially when I came across this program I was kind of joking about it with a few of my friends just because it's like it's ridiculous who moves to the other side of the world But the more I looked into the program the more I liked it and the more it made sense to me 
personally. So let me tell you why I'm extremely happy to be accepted into the UQ Oshner program, even though I'll still be considered an IMG or international medical graduate, just like I would be at any Caribbean school. First of all, the program is divided into two different phases. Phase one takes place in Brisbane, Australia at the University of Queensland, which by the way, frequently ranks very high in terms of a global university. For example, at the time of this video, US News puts the University of Queensland at number 36 worldwide, while QS Stars places it at number 51 in medical school rankings. This isn't to say that school ranking is a particularly important fact for me personally, or that anyone should base their decision on this factor alone. But for me, it was very reassuring to know that UQ has a good reputation and history as a university, because after all, I'm literally moving to the other side of the world for this, and it's nice to have some confidence in the school that I will be going to. So that was phase one with the University of Queensland. Now, phase two mainly takes place in Louisiana, and this is where the Oshner part of the Oshner program comes in. The Oshner Health System is the largest healthcare organization in Louisiana, and this particular program was essentially designed by them to have an inflow of potential residents made in-house. Years three and four of the program are mainly spent in Louisiana, like I said, with Oshner, and where this differs a lot from other international medical schools is that since Oshner has its own hospitals and health clinic networks, a lot of the rotations are in-house unlike other international medical schools that heavily depend on affiliated hospital networks for student rotations. This was a huge deciding factor for me because a lot of the UQ Oshner students simply end up matching into a residency somewhere in Louisiana. And I feel that having your own uh, rotations be in-house has a lot to do with this. By the way, if you're curious for like the all-time average match rate for UQ Oshner, it's around 94%, which is comparable to US schools. For 2021 specifically, UQ Oshner match was at 97%. And then if we look at the data from all US MD schools combined, their average match rate was at 92.8%. The average for all US DO schools was 89.1%, and the average for US International Medical Graduates, or IMGs, which would include UQ Oshner students, was 59.5%. If all of that sounded a little bit overwhelming and you're a bit confused, just know that from all of that information, we can see two things. One is that UQ Oshner has very, very high match rates. And two, all international medical schools are not created equal. There's a lot of variability in the different international medical schools because their average match was around a 60%, but if we look at UQ Oshner by itself, it is above 90%. Outside of all this data, uh, I did used to live in Louisiana for like eight years and I still have very, very close ties to the state. So that was another big factor for me wanting to be a part of this program and for it just being a good fit for me. But there were also three other personal reasons why I decided that this was the right choice. My first reason was time. So the school calendar for the University of Queensland is just a little bit different. It starts in January. And so since US schools tend to start around August, I would have something like an eight month head start by going to UQ instead of going to a US based school if I got in. And therein lies the problem because when I got my acceptance letter, I had essentially a choice. I could either matriculate into UQ and have a 100% chance of starting medical school in 2022, or I could wait around and see if I could potentially get into a US school the next cycle. Well, with all of the things that UQ has going for it that we've talked about, and because I really, really value my time very highly, I decided to happily accept the offer. The second reason has to do with life experience. While I consider myself a very capable person, I'm not a robot and I do have my weaknesses. So this is why I like to read a lot into things to improve productivity and into how to become a better human being like in general. But there are certain life skills that can't really be developed without experience. So just the mere fact that I'm gonna be in a country on literally the other side of the world and will have to fend for myself away from everyone I know will be both a blessing and a curse. A blessing because it will really force me to grow in different ways that I don't think I can even imagine yet. And a curse because sadly I will be like super, super far away from my family and I think that'll be very hard on me but I know in the long run it will be very good because I will develop skills along the way that will make me a much better doctor and a better person in general, I hope. The last reason is simply that I've already spent a lot of my life traveling. I've lived in three different countries so far 
And even within the United States, I've lived in three different states, Florida, Louisiana, and New Jersey. So the mere fact that I can combine my medical education at a very good program in a completely different part of the world, while also getting to know a completely different health system and then being able to compare down the line is something that just is very, very attractive to me. I hope you enjoyed this video and that I've at least given you some ideas on why this specific program might work for people like myself. And while I don't think this is for everyone, I mean, it does require you to move literally to the other side of the world, I do think it is an option. And it's an option I didn't really know about until very late in my pre-med journey. So I guess the whole point of this is to just give you an idea of what I did and why, so that you have another option at your disposal if this interests you. With that said, we've reached the end of the video here, so I'm gonna do a little outro. Uh, smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Goodbye.